on your heart here. Thank you for joining us on Hollywood Live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to 2022. And thank you for joining us once again on Hollywood Live. We're wishing everybody good health and lots of love. And speaking of love, we've got two of your favorite people here today with me, Ebene Noel and Isaiah Whitlock Jr. from a new own series, The Kings of Napa. Welcome. How are you both? Good, good. Thank you. Oh, good. Uh, you know, I really want to talk about the series because I've seen a bit of it. And of course, it's good. It's like, a, you know, one of those classic own series. But before we get to that, we have lost another icon. Uh, God, Sidney Portier has left us. And, you know, I got to tell you, Isaiah, whenever I see one of your stellar performances, I see some Sydney in there. And, oh. and Ebony, I, I want you both to just comment on what he meant to all of us and to you. That's a huge compliment uh, to, to, to hear that uh, because he was someone that I admired uh, growing up. Uh, and I remember when he did win the Academy Award, I, it, it said to me that it, it could be done. You know, mm -hmm. if you work hard enough and really uh, make a commitment, uh, it can happen. And he's always been in the back of, in the back of my mind and somebody that, uh, I've always looked up to and admired, and to hear that he passed away today is really, really heartbreaking. I mean, it it, it took a yeah. little something out of me, but I uh, know. I'm fortunate to have witnessed his work, and um, and I'm fortunate to have him as an inspiration. I couldn't think of anybody better. No, and I and I see it in you all of the time, Ebene. What would you say? his contribution, I mean, there've been so many, but for you as an actor, mm. what would you say his contribution has been? I think when I think of Sidney Poitier, I think of a man who was regal and yet human, right? It wasn't that he was so, he was carrying himself in such a way that he was far away from us. It was very um, tangible in a way, in a way that when I look at Sidney Poitier, I see my dad, I see my granddad. Um, especially with, you know, he's from the Caribbean. My family's from the Caribbean. He's a dark skinned man with just luminous energy. And um, I will always remember how drawn I felt to him the first time that I saw him on the screen because you don't see, well, <laughs> we didn't see that often. And I'm very, very much aware that I stand on his shoulders and that I'm only here today because of the inroads that he made and um, others like him. And I, there's just, it's a massive, massive loss. Um, yeah. yeah. But we keep going. And Sydney <laughs> lived a really good life and left a lot of stuff for us, including the Kings of Napa. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So this is a very, very wealthy family because quite frankly, unless you're really wealthy, you are not living up in Napa. Uh, and, and you've got stuff going on in the family. Tell me a little bit about the premise of the, of the show. And then we, I got some other stuff I want to talk about. Okay. So the show centers on um, our family run vineyard in Napa Valley. We see the Kings and the, we meet the Kings in the beginning and sort of all of the the roles in the family that they've comfortably fallen into up until this point. And then shortly into the pilot, there's a family crisis that happens um, and some secrets that spill out that we, that sends us like, that turns us on our head and that we have to grapple with for the remainder of the series. So that's, that's sort of the setup for the show without giving away too much. Without giving, and Isaiah, you play the patriarch, correct? Mm -hmm. Patriarch of the King family. Uh, I'm a surgeon, but uh, I am the head of this household and, and the winery. Uh, we've sort of built it up. It's become very, very successful. And uh, uh, I let my children run it, but uh, they have a tendency to butt heads here and there. And I think some of my actions in the past has led to that being 
much, much more dramatic. And uh, uh, that's kind of the driving force uh, behind the show and how they come to deal with it. Uh, but they never take a back seat. They, uh, they go at one another. They, uh, they say what they have to say. And, 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 uh, and, but at the end of the day, they love one another. And, uh, and that comes across. And they're still selling a lot of good wine up there too, I'll bet, during the uh, series. Yes, did, you guys get, did you get to drink some of that stuff while you were shooting this? <laughs> and that's, you know, people see people drinking on the air. Is that real or are they just giving you grape juice? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not grape juice necessarily. It's definitely a mix so that, you know, we don't indulge too much while we're working. Uh -huh. But... Uh, during the filming of the series, we definitely got a chance to learn more. And so as you're learning, you're trying to sample and, um, and get a firsthand experience. <laughs> <laughs> what you're learning about. And you know, so I gotta say, if you, don't have, if you don't have anything to say in the scene, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Because they got some good stuff up there, yeah. uh, even though I'm, I'm not sure if you shot it there or not. So, you know, it's very interesting because Own has really owned this kind of family drama, sitcom, -y, not sitcom, but uh, uh, soap opera type of shows. And they've done very, very well with it. But I find it interesting because all of a sudden, it's not all of a sudden, about the past five or six years, there are no poor people, poor Black people on TV. I mean, you know, like the 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 kings of Napa living very large. Uh, and we look at Greenleaf, black people live large on TV these days. Now we know that is not the case generally, but that's the way it looks. How has that paradigm changed the image, do you think, of African-Americans? I think it has brought African-Americans to the, or let me take that back. I think people begin to see that we are just as complex, that yes, we can live large, but we don't live large the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and our, our differences of large are, I mean, there's, there's many different layers of it. And uh, I think in the past, you just would sometimes see uh, a black family living large and that was it, mm -hmm. uh, and that was enough. Now, not only are you living large, but you have something to say about it and you have something to say to the other person about it. And you, it becomes very, very complex and based on where you are uh, uh, determines how you do all of that. And I think this is the opportunity that we're afforded. And this is what people will see is that uh, there's a lot of nuance there mm -hmm. that starts to come out. And that's what's going to be appealing about this show. Well, you know, uh, Ebene, both you and Isaiah have worked with some really stellar uh, ensemble casts. Mm -hmm. uh, you've both been in just great stuff. I don't even need to go through your resumes here. So what is it about this cast? And what is it about any working with a cast coming onto a situation or a new show like this and, and doing that bonding, that chemistry thing that everybody talks about? How does that work? Well, you know, it worked very differently for this show than the others that I've been on because we were in COVID and um, we shot a lot of it in Toronto. So when we flew out there, they were at level one shutdown, meaning things were not open. And we couldn't have a cast dinner, which is what typically happens is like, you get to the location, you have a cast dinner or drink so you can meet everybody and you can talk and, and, you know, touch base. But with this, we couldn't do that. We had to quarantine for the first two weeks that we were there. So the first thing that we did was do a Zoom with each other. That's the new way of the world. And just, um, and, and open ourselves up to each other to say, hey, if you wanna talk about the character, if you wanna talk about certain scenes, if you wanna talk about our relationships, please like, let's call each other, let's talk, let's have as much, discussion as possible because we can't set eyes on each other until literally showing up to set. And that really helped us. That really helped us. I mean, we have a natural chemistry. The casting directors were what, touched by an angel casting this, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, but it really, really helped us that we, we took that time to really break down the relationships that these family members have because then our natural chemistry also had, you know, a wealth of 
information and backstory to play on when we got to the shooting of the scenes. And I also just want to say, I would not recommend quarantine. I would not suggest that for anybody. <laughs> uh, but I did notice after being in quarantine for two weeks, to get out and see another human being, yeah, it, like I just wanted to latch on and <laughs> get along because uh, I, I I've been by myself for two weeks and. I, I need these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if anything, it'll teach you just how important that human contact is. Oh, isn't it? And, isn't uh, it? and then we had an amazing uh, cast, amazing. The bonding went very, very quickly. Uh, and I, I've sort of figured out if you're there to act by yourself, things are not going to go good. But if you're there to act with everybody else, and really create an ensemble, it can be an amazing experience. Well, it really is. And like I said, Own has really owned this genre over the <laughs> years. Uh, I'm proud of Oprah and the team over there for, for doing all that they do. And you guys are just amazing. I have to tell you, you both are just, we love you and uh, we're going to support you in any way we can. And uh, give us just one last reason why everybody should watch The Kings of Napa, which is airing like, coming on right now almost. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you should watch The Kings of Napa because it's a celebration of Blackness. Yes, we're a family dealing with drama and turmoil, but we're diverse. We're a diverse group of people. And I think we're, we're putting on, we're putting on for the people. So yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you should watch it because I feel you'll be represented in this show. Oh. Uh, everybody's gonna find a little something uh, to latch on to. Uh, and usually what you're latching on to is what's inside of you. So uh, uh, there's going to be a little something for everybody. I love it. I cannot wait for this series. I got to tell you. Um, Isaiah, what's coming up next for you? Because I know you stay really busy. Uh, I don't really, I've got some other stuff coming out uh, in the summer. And then I also uh, do work on a, on a show called Your Honor. Uh, yes. and, uh, I'll be prepping myself for that over the next few months and, uh, and giving that a go also. Uh, that's coming back. I, I wasn't sure if it was coming back. I have no idea the way you guys left off the last season. I was like, Whoa, what can they do after this? But <laughs> yeah, we'll, Good find writing. we'll find a way. We'll, 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 we'll find a way. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> Ebony, what about you? Oh, well, I just did a stint on Harlem, um, which just came out, I guess, Thanksgiving last year. So I was on that for um, a little bit, a little storyline with one of the main characters. And now I'm just here working on some of my own projects that I, I'm trying to develop, you know, explore other areas of the industry. And then hopefully a season two for Napa, so. <laughs> Yes, yes. I have a feeling you're going to get a season two, but you can come back and join us on Hollywood Live anytime, please. <laughs> we love you guys yeah. here. Thank you so much. And to everybody else out there, thank you for tuning in. You don't ever want to miss an episode of Hollywood Live because you see how we bring it to you, okay? Uh, happy New Year, everybody. And thank you for joining us. The Kings of Napa on OWN. Check it out. <laughs>